everyone. Um, occasionally, I get a bee in my bonnet, and uh, this is not a comment towards the current team at the top of the room. My bee in this bonnet that I wear every day is this. Brian's come along for Barry, who unfortunately is uh, not with us at the moment because of personal circumstances. The poor chap can't say a word about the business that he does. <coughs> so I'm going to give 10 seconds of my time to talk about Brian. Uh, he's a great locksmith. He turned out at no notice for me uh, some months ago, did the job that I wanted, and also did a mini service on the garage door that I have. Fantastic, all within the price that um, he quoted. Great guy. Up to me. Um, <laughs> that's my bee, it's buzzed. I'm going to hand around some bits and you can have a look at them while I'm droning on if you like. And if you don't like, uh, fall asleep. <laughs> if you'd have said I could have bought you the new colour brochure, leave it, you put in my brochure. I don't do colour, it's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> we did it for you for free. <laughs> Um, this morning's chat um, is really the same suit, uh, re-whizzed, reheated, um, that I've given to you over the last six years. I have a, very few passions in life, uh, and one of them is trying to convert people who run small businesses from an attitude of laissez-faire or in the parlance, I don't give a shit, to people who do give a shit about the way they run the business, the way they collect the cash, and the way they prepare for the inevitable bust-ups that we all have in life and business. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> when I started the practice in um, 1989, there were three of us who bought the practice. Jeremy, Ray, and me. By 1993, 94, Ray had died of a heart attack at age 49. He was also a drunk by then because he'd made some bad business investments. Jeremy collapsed and died age 49 on our golf day with clients uh, at Borton in 1999. And since that time, two assistant solicitors who worked in my practice, uh, Nick and Helen, have both died as well. Nick was uh, put to death by the medical staff at Medway Hospital when they forgot to top his air tanks up um, overnight and no one supervised the giving of air to him. Helen died in a house fire. So life does have these little wrinkles and the wrinkles are such that they can be catastrophic, not just for the families uh, in those circumstances, but also for the business. So for example, um, when Ray died, he, Jeremy and I, didn't have a partnership agreement. We never quite got round to it. The fortunate thing was that we were so deep in debt at the time that it didn't really matter. Um, I say it didn't really matter because the widow um, who was left uh, was not going to get anything out of the practice. There was nothing we could give her except pass her on with the debt that we'd incurred to buy the practice. That's by and by. Um, so there are some, I don't know what's the word, um, living examples, if that's the right word, of how not to run your business when you are small and you think you haven't got the resources to do something about it. You can do something about it. Uh, and what I want to do is take a few minutes of your time uh, in this presentation to tell you how you might do it. <coughs> so on this sheet of paper here, it's got a rather fancy logo at the top what I designed a few years ago. It took me ages to work out the colour. Uh, I've tried to give you some headers to fit the particular category of business that you might be in. Now, some of you might be like me in partnership. No limited cover, uh, company cover at all. Others of you are directors who, who operate within limited liability structure and have some degree of protection if things go wrong. What I've um, headed the sheet up with is running your business, what do you need? If you're self-employed, you can be on your own or you can be in partnership. 
Whatever you call yourself, as far as the law is concerned, it's irrelevant because the law will designate a title to you and give you the liabilities that go with that title if you opt to do nothing at all. And you will either be in partnership or a sole trader. That has consequences. On the other hand, um, if you're smart and you go and see an accountant, and if uh, your professional body allows you, you can take the cover of limited liability behind a corporate structure. But that only works provided you run the company in the right way. Mark will tell you about that as well. If you haven't got fitted up with the right kind of paperwork to sit behind the, the job that you do, a partner, a director, then uh, you could be uh, paragliding without a parachute because if things crash and burn, uh, the law again will pick you up with consequences that you may not have anticipated. In addition to those things, to run your business successfully, you need to have a cash collection policy and you also need uh, to have some kind of insurance yes, cover to sit behind you. Sorry, Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> what, the insurance cover or the, um, the other bit? No, it was my phone. I'm sorry. Oh, was it? Oh, okay, fine. I thought I was being heckled. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that boring yet, is it? No. It's time to turn it off. <laughs> <That's the wrong> <laughs> <button>. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it, don't worry about it. So, let me run through those, those four things independently. Uh, anybody dozed off yet? No? <laughs> if you're on your own, uh, self-employed or in partnership, you need to have um, some things to support you. And it works like this. If you're on your own... Uh, or in partnership, you need a partnership agreement. They're very easy to do. They are simply statements of how you and your partner sort your business affairs between you. How you share the profit, how you share the debt, what happens to the assets if the partnership crashes and burns, or if you decide to wind it up or sell it. Yeah? You could actually do that yourself. You don't need a lawyer to do that. If you are in a corporate uh, structure, a director, the law will recognise that you have a degree of protection behind that corporate veil. But what it won't do is give you that protection if you decide simply to run it as a partnership or as a sole trader's business. Because the law will say you haven't operated within the legalities of a corporate structure. It's really important that you do that. If you have... Um, co-director or co-shareholder, I should say, then you need to have a shareholders agreement. They're a bit more complicated. One of the sheets that's going around tells you a little bit about what should go in those director's agreements. They're important because in the event of a breakdown in the business, the document will tell you how the business, um, the company, its assets, its debts, its liabilities will be shared amongst you. The reason for writing it down is to avoid dispute. And dispute is at the root of all problems, as we know. Perception. I thought that we were going to do this, whereas someone else thought you were going to do something completely different. That's where disputes start. That's how I make my money. It's a good steer for you guys to avoid coming to me for anything other than the laying down of the basic principles of an agreement to help you and your partners, your directors, your shareholders, organise your business affairs. Um, finally, cash collection. If you don't have some idea of how you go about collecting cash, uh, you ought to. Uh, these days, you collect sums of money out of 10,000 quid by money claims online. Go online, it's dead easy, file the claim, pay the fee, and hopefully run the process online to collect your cash quickly. If you don't get money on account um, through your contracts, you may find you end up with a judgment against a debtor that's worthless, but that's your fault. 
you should be running your cash affairs better than that. 16, 15. Um, if you need any help with cash collection, we can do that. Under 10,000 quid, it's not worth me getting involved because you don't get any cost back. But over 10,000 quid, if that ever arises, I can help you. Insurance cover, most important thing of all, make sure you're fully uh, indemnified against uh, employee liability, public liability, and you have your assets and your building, if you have one, uh, covered as well. There you go. That's it. Um, thank you very much.